The unit I'm going to show you right now is our HDMI 2x2 UTP matrix switch. The part number for this is the R014-NTX-C5E-202. You know, it looks like this. This is the front side with the LEDs, the manual switch buttons, as well as the reset button. And here's the back end where you have the RS-232s, the 3.5mm RS-232s socket, as well as the inputs A and B, and outputs, the UTP outputs 1 and 2. Now, <coughs> the connection setup is as, it, as this is if you plan to use the RS-232, you first plug it in, like so, and then you plug in the players. I will have the player 1, top player go on the input A, bottom player on input B, and then the left TV, the right TV on output 1, and the left TV on output 2. Now, lastly the power. Now, when I put the power in, all the LEDs will come up, and I'll describe what those are in a few minutes. So, another background is, since this is a 2x2, two two, and I put all the, I see all the plugins right here, I am using a Samsung Blu-ray, as well as a Panasonic Blu-ray, and for the UTP receiver, UTP and the output end, I have to use receivers, and for the receivers, I have, we have, we offer two different types, passive and active. For the passive, we have a dongle, something like this, that goes to the TV. And the max distance is 50 feet, 50 feet, 1080p. And I had this connected to the left monitor. Now, for the active, we have a few, two different styles, a box style and a wallpaper style. I'm actually using a wallpaper style, as you can see here, a wallpaper right here. And for the active, we actually, our spec is that we go up to 150 feet, 1080p. Like I said earlier, for the R232, is that once you plug in the power, and you have the R232 set up, over, if you look over here, you notice it pops up, HDMI UTP, matrix 2x2 UTP, which is the unit, the name of the unit, and then the compile time and date, version, as well as the line saying use matrix IO define, which basically stands for, it's ready to accept commands. Now, let me start by turning all the players on. Turn TVs. And here you go. Everything's coming on. Now, if you look over here, you notice the lights. Now, for, for the LEDs, we have the lights is the we have a power byte, which means it's gaining power, and then we have the orange lights, which means signal is coming in from the source to the unit and it's being sent out, and also we have lights right on, above the outputs, so these two right here. These basically signify which input is currently selected. By default, we have it set we have it set as input A. So once you plug in power, it will go automatically go to input A. Okay, now let me go back to the TV. Now, if you look over here, here's the, so far since it's on input A, this is the actual home screen for the TV input for the player. You actually press play on these. And to have it show you. Now, while I'm doing that, we also have on the unit a reset button. Just in case anything goes wrong, you hit reset, so you don't have to actually pull the power. Now, here you go, input, the video comes up. The audio, let me mute this real quick. Now, I want to show you the actual resolution information we have. There you go. Okay. Now, let me go back. Now, as like I said, we have two different ways of adjusting these. So, first way we have is the buttons on the front of the unit. You see the switch units. You see that it's above a switch one or switch two. 
If I hit it, you'll see it changing. And I just hit it both right now, so I changed to the second player. As you can see, they both come up. Now, can you just do another one again? Just to show you the actual different combination I do, I did. So I have right now, I put one that's on source B, I put two on source A. And you see they're both different. I have right now muted by mute unmute them. You can hear the sound. back again. Now, another way we have control, we have a way of controlling this is through remote. This is how our, our remote looks like. Since this is a two port, only the one and two you works. The three and four is not, you can disregard those. Now, the way this works is these control the outputs and it cycles the input basically. So, let's say I have an output one. If I want to switch outputs, switch to the source, I just hit I just hit one, and you see it switch. I want to? I want to switch it again. I want to switch it again. Hit one, and I change again. Same thing with two. Now that was the remote. Now the third way of changing it is through the RS two 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 function. Now for the RS two two two. If you look at it here, we have, like I said previously, we have three commands. We have a switching command, a power down command, as well as a status command. Now, let me first start with the switching command. Basically, the command function format is this. You hit SW for the switch, to mean switch. Now, then you use the letter, the, actually the number of the output you want. So I want output two, then you hit space, and then the letter of the source. So I hit B, and I hit then enter. And you'll see command SW2 space B jumps from A to B. Now, that's the first command. The second command we have, like I said earlier, is status command. The status or the state of the, of the unit is, the command name is, the command is STE. And when you hit enter, it'll show the command state. And what basically it does is states for each output, which input is it assigned, is it on, and if the input is getting signal or is it idle. So in this case, you look over, you look at, for example, if we have output one, it will say output one, B, bracket, signal, because there's getting the orange values right now because signal. As for, and then, if you, same thing with the output 2, it'll be output 2, B, bracket, signal. If there was no signal, it'll say bracket idle instead. Now, the last command we have is uh, to power down unit. So, to power down, what basically it does is, without connect, disconnecting anything, it basically doesn't accept any inputs, and does not set any output. The command for that is PWD. Hey PWD, you notice? Over here, the lights all go off except for the power. So it's still synced, it's just that there's no sending anything at all. It's not getting anything or sending anything. Now, so if I hit PWD again, you notice know, everything comes back on. Now, the thing about the, P, the, the power down command is that unlike the power, if you unplug the power and plug it back in, every time it goes to the default of input A. If you use the power down command, it will save which input you were previously on and come back to that again. 